Hi, I'm Deanne Gist, and I'm here to give you all the juicy details. Somebody wanted to know how long it took me before my book, first book was published. Well, my first book was A Bride Most Begrudging, and I finished writing this book in 1997, but it didn't sell to a publisher until 2004. And I originally wrote it for the general market, and my agent submitted it to several publishing houses. All of them rejected it, and I have a couple of the rejection letters here that I was going to read to you. One of them says, Thanks for sending Deanne Gist's novel for my consideration. Unfortunately, I'm going to have to pass on this one. Although I found the author's writing skills to be solid, I didn't feel particularly drawn in or moved by the hero and heroine. They seemed to lack some definition. Fast forward to that same book where she didn't care for the characters she thought they were lacking to 2005 when the book actually hits the shelves and is reviewed. I was amazed that this is Deanne Gist's first book. Her feisty heroine yanked me into the story from the start. Liz Curtis Higgs, best-selling author. Drew O'Connor and Lady Constance are the most beloved characters I've read in recent memory. I grew to love the two of them even more than I loved Athos in The Three Musketeers, to whom I've remained faithful for 30 years. Last one. Whether you normally read historical fiction or not, this one's a keeper. The depth of characters and great dialogue carry this book. All the same book. All the same book. This particular editor found my characters unengaging and lacking. The reviews pouring in when it hit the shelves was something different. Now, some may say, well, it went through all the editorial process, and that's certainly right. But the core of the characterization was already there. The things we were fixing in the editorials for this particular book was not characterization. So it's very subjective. It just depends on what the person, the editor, is and what they like. Not what they are, but who they are and what they like. Here's another rejection letter. Same book. With much regret, and then in parentheses, I mean that exclamation point, I'm going to have to pass on Deanne Gist's book. It's a good first novel, all right, but I'm afraid I just can't find a way in the immediate future to take on yet another newcomer, especially with a novel set in a time period that's a bit difficult to sell to a sizable audience. This is a great rejection letter. She is, has no problem with the craft of my novel. What she has a problem with is that she has too many new novelists. She can't take any more debut novelists. And on top of that, A Bride Most Begrudging is set in 1644 Virginia. Well, right about this in the late 90s is when Pocahontas, the movie, came out. And that is the first piece of entertainment that was set in the 17th century. And this editor knew that her marketing team said no. It may be a, a good book, but it's not marketable. And if your marketing team says no, then it's a no. And it's important because if marketing, even if your editor's super excited about your book, if the marketing team isn't excited about your book, it's not going to go anywhere. So she, she was right to reject it because the book would have tanked because the marketing department didn't think that the time period was marketable. Fast forward now to 2005 when it's released and it was an overnight success. So, you know, you can't take those rejection letters too seriously because number one, they're subjective and number two, they're time sensitive. Maybe that book wasn't marketable in 1997 but it was certainly marketable in 2005. So the timing has to be right, and the editor who reads it has to be right, and the marketing team has to like it. I tell people finding a publisher is kind of like finding a spouse. Everything has to be just right. And now you know all the juicy details. If you have any comments or questions that you would like me to tell you about in the next 
video, just leave it, a comment below, and I'll do my best to answer as many as I can. In the meanwhile, you have a great, great week. Bye-bye.